All right. So here, even before the show, you know, we're sitting here and I'm asking questions and trying to shut up. So we just do the show <laughs> because I, I do. I mean, when you look at, so I did a, I did a show recently uh, on the Ziegler, uh, the Ziegler show podcast with Dr. Caroline Leaf. Yeah. And I said, and this is where uh, this, we can start here. I said, okay, so talking about brain growth, growth, uh, is that fair to say, I use the analogy of a warehouse. Let's say that my that Kevin Miller's head, my head is a warehouse. It's 10,000 square feet and it's got six inch walls and I can read and learn and whatever and fill it 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 with more knowledge and more knowledge and more knowledge. So I'm thinking of, you know, just filling the shelves, filling the shelves, filling the shelves. But is, is it fair to say brain growth is saying, okay, what if I want though, instead of just filling it with knowledge, I actually want the capacity to increase. I want to be able to have, I want 10,000 square feet to be 15,000 square feet and I want thicker walls. Uh, I want, uh, you okay. Know, okay. Uh, uh, foot, foot, you know, like my house, straw bale walls. Is what? that brain growth as opposed to just filling it with knowledge? Great, great as question. Opposed, so ability capacity. Okay. I think I see where you're going. And if we use that analogy, probably a better way to say it is, Kevin, you do have a brain that has a capacity of <clears throat> 10,000 square feet, literally almost infinite capacity to store and retrieve. Well, and is that the age old thing of we're all using 10% of our That's brains. Right. And if I would yes. just have a seizure in the right spot, I could access well, what's vast that movie? things and make things levitate. Uh, phenomenon. Phenomenon. Yeah, phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. That's with uh, John Travolta. Yeah. If you guys haven't seen that really interesting, <laughs> he has a, uh, well, I'll uh, give away the movie. It's yeah, interesting. It's, he, it's, something happens. He can harness he can more of his use brain, all of his brain, yeah. learn Portuguese in five minutes and all that. Yeah, I want that. Well, sure. All of us would want that. But the reality is that that's why it's a movie. It, it doesn't happen that way. Um, and, and it's not so much that you only use one little dark corner of your 10,000 foot auditorium that it's all dark and, and cobwebby deep <laughs> in the deep, dark recesses there. But maybe that that's a better analogy than you actually going from 10,000 to 20,000 square feet. You don't need to do that. That is not brain growth. Okay. Okay. So brain growth, I think is better <clears throat> thought of that. You have this 10,000 square foot thing and you have, because if I asked you, what's the German, what is, what is zeitgeist mean? Or what's the German word for that? You don't, you don't care. I don't care. It's just knowledge. It's you, just, you don't need and that. And that is what I'm asking because I, I'm, I'm pushing against or, or poking is knowledge. Cause I feel like I can fill and fill and fill and fill no. with knowledge and I'm not. It's facility with knowledge. It's, it's, and that's where the brain and I'm smiling because it's such a cool thing Yes, you have little packets of knowledge in there, but how do you access them fluidly going from and apply them? So there's wisdom, right? How does, because uh, you can be super duper smart and just not have any common sense. And how do you apply the knowledge? And in fact, a whole lot of your 10,000 square foot is spent not remembering things. Like you're looking at me and if I ask you what color is, are the leaves on the tree out your window, you might not even green. They're purple. They're purple. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's a good case in point that <laughs> now they tree. used to be, they used to be green. Yeah, so maybe well. a trick question. Um, but you don't need to know that. Now, if you're a horticulturalist or a something like that, you would know. Well, we recently watched the, you did too. The old Sherlock, right? Uh, yeah. The old um, Benner, Benedict bum, cucumber, cucumber batch. batch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, he does that. He's super smart. And in the movie, they're saying, you know, the, the Oh, guy he didn't know him, that we, about the earth was round and something about the moon. And well, his buddy was like, how can you possibly not know that? Yeah. Or even <laughs> something he did know last week. And now he doesn't remember. Why do you yeah. not remember? He says, well, I need I more room for other stuff. In, <laughs> yeah. in essence, I, I did. I love that. Uh, it, okay. There was somebody who was, Long time ago, you know, Henry Ford, it wasn't Henry Ford, one of these old historical, you know, big names who was accused of being dumb. And he said, because, he said, in essence, I'm paraphrasing really badly, but he said, you're asking me about, you know, knowledge and memory, stuff that I can find in a book. Why use up my brain for that? I want to use it for X, Y, Z, which I think about a lot because I'm concerned with critical thinking, creative thinking, uh, intuition these things. I want my brain. I want, I want the intuition of, of, of 
Jason Bourne, you know, and, and being aware of my surroundings. I want a question to come up or a problem to come up and a quick solution. That, you know, the opposite of what we have with brain fog these days where, man, I just can't get my brain, which, you know, that's, that's the far end of that spectrum. But over here, man, I want my brain working. I mean, I guess I'm writing a book right now. I, I need to be able to go down the rabbit hole and think uh, critically and whatever. So I want my brain working better at better capacity that that description is more about the fluidity of of the the things about the brain that people don't think about so the default mode network is what's the default mode so a lot of what you just said is is remember on jason Bourne on the very first one he didn't understand why he had memorized all of the car's license plates on the way in. Yeah. He didn't at that point in time really want to know that. He didn't know why he knew that. So you don't even know what color the leaves are. So you don't want Jason's orange brain. <laughs> it's, he needed that in his, he had honed that in. Right. And it became habit. Yeah. I don't That's, need to do, I don't need to do that going to the restaurant because chances are nobody's there to assassinate me. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but vocabulary, you need to think yeah. of six words that mean, trepidation as you're writing down something but trepidation is not the right word and i find myself wanting right now my 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 literary agent literary agent wants stories he wants stories of yeah, people that okay. i've that you need to be had to, on the show call and put those stories in a context yeah quickly which if my, i've got brain fog i look over at my bookshelf and i don't remember man if i'm thinking well i can pull up stuff i know yeah. i know when i'm on uh, on tap on a show like this where man i can just pull stuff up yeah. and i've had shows like that man any, any thought that comes to mind and I, I got the reference i got the whatever and i've had other, had other shows where i'm just can't think of the word dude i just right uh, the tip of the tongue kind of thing yeah. so that tip of the tongue idea the word is there you know it yeah but the accessing of it so it's the fluidity and the quickness of access and here so much of the brain action depends upon what you did yesterday and ten thousand yesterdays so now we're back to that idea of habit. And in a brain, I think it's very <clears throat> apropos to think of a pathway through a forest or a pathway through a field. Yeah. If I, we got a field next door. So the kids cut across to the school and there's a path. And then if you were to walk across there, where do you think you would walk most naturally? Path. Just, yeah, path just, least resistance. Just, yeah. Now, if you said, if you're a person that said, huh, I don't want to go to the school. I want to go over there. Well, cut across the field but now you got brambles in your socks and this and that and the other and whatever but if you do that enough time you create another path yeah. and the brain has about you know a couple of quadrillion of those paths but you don't want to be burdened with the knowledge every day of okay how do i drive again where's the brake and the gas okay wait a minute the carburetor does this and that and like i joke with patients all the time you don't want to have to get a phd in chemistry to make breakfast every day but everybody's confused about, well, then fats, carbs, carbohydrates. Oh, I've never heard about this. My mom didn't teach me this when I was making breakfast with her. No, you don't want that. It, but your brain does what it has been doing. So that's good. Well, right? so today I don't have much memory of driving into no, work. You I don't. don't need it. I was, you don't want that. Memory. I was taking the effort, the brain effort that I didn't have to use for that, that, that path. I was thinking about, think about the show. show and yeah. Questions. That's right. So you weren't burdened by the very complex job of driving. Yeah. And you've done that for yeah, 10, that my fifteen year old son would have been able to think about That's nothing right. else <laughs> other than that driving. And any and he over breaks and under breaks yeah. and takes the corner too fast and dad says, What are you doing? Yeah. And all of that. And then about when you're, you know, hopefully maybe, you know, eighteen or something, you, you think much less about those things so that you can think about other things. And that's what you're talking about. And so what what I think we want to emphasize today is don't take your brain for granted. Like you and I right now are not thinking about balance. Do you, can you think about how much incredible information is going on for us not to fall down, yeah. to speak a language, to look in another's eyes and into it? What are you thinking there? If I have a question mark on my face or all of that is going on all the time and we take it for granted. And then yeah. people come in and they say, I'm imbalanced. And I say, have you fallen down? And they're like, well, no, I don't fall down but I, you know the nuance of over my golf ball or something i'm just a little off well for tiger woods that means a couple of million dollars per yeah. swing and for somebody else it just means you know with the guys and for somebody else if they don't golf they don't even know yet so 
So how do you grow then your brain? You actually create habit. So this touches on okay. like willpower, like yeah. what you, you, you create your environment so you don't have to think about the snack in your cabinet over there or whatever, a thousand variations on that. You set your car up to like you need to not drive a Ferrari because I will go too fast. You will go too fast. Yeah. So, so get a stay in my suburban that I drove suburban. this morning. It has 212,000 miles and zero to 60 and almost never. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah. So that default mode network and the facility. And now on the, on the, on the negative side, that pathway that easily gets you from your house to here and you don't have to think about it and it's very efficient. Let's just say it's not a great pathway. Now it's a rut. Mm -hmm. And now it's a think of our pathway across the woods over here. Uh, think of the trenches in World War One. Now it's a 10 foot deep trench. And you try to climb out of that to do something there and you just slip back in. And you're like, oh, it's so hard. I just can't not eat a snack. And not only is it right there, but every other thing about your life slips you back into this habit. And you're trying to get out, but it's so hard. And, and then most people say, ah, God wants me to be this way, or I don't want to think about it today or whatever. And they just walk to the next lunch thing and they make the rut deeper and deeper and deeper. And you see the balance there of how do you create an efficient path, but not a rut that you can't get out of. And I kind of think of the brain as full of these grooves, right? Like I want a groove of kindness. Yeah. I want to be a deeper rut of responding to people in such a way and honestly, so, you know, we think of Sermon on the Mount, and that's what Jesus, he, you know, when was the last time you ever, quote, unquote, turn the other cheek? And the, 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 the teaching there is to not grit your teeth and say, all right, you idiot, go ahead and hit me on the other side. That, that's not the point. No. The point is to be becoming the kind of person who responds to anger in, in the right way. Because sometimes it's war, and sometimes you turn the other cheek. So how do you do that? Well, you... Yesterday, I tried to be becoming the kind of person that was going to be kind when I needed to be kind or stern when I needed to be stern or stop at a red light without thinking about it. And here we are today. And, and you're trying to write a book. And the best way to write a book is to have written a book. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, I'm going to come back to your because you've, you, you know, you talked about that for years, that greasy ruts in our brain, good and bad. And I am increasingly just um it's so it's so overwhelming how we are given you know we get those in our upbringing where we don't have a choice and that's, you know, for well, the most right. part we come out and we experience what we experience we had parents who were this way or we didn't have parents and we had this upbringing we were raised in the mountains we were raised in the slums we were whatever that's what we know and to me it's brainwashing i mean it, it is it, you know by definition almost uh. it's brainwashing it's it's creating those ruts and then we come out and we see different opportunities, different things, different ideas. We say, man, I want that. Mm -hmm. And to get out, like you mm -hmm. said, to get out of that 10 foot trench, slippery slopes, and to do another one is, is huge. It's and I think we, I think we minimize. It's not impossible. It's not impossible, but uh, yeah, but, we but do I, minimize. Yeah, I think right. we minimize it. I don't think we give the gravity to it. When you have a patient in here who's been eating the same way or exercising the same way or not exercising or thinking the same way. And you say, gosh, we need to get you over here. It's, it's like moving. A, you're going to, you, you need help. You need movers. You need dollies. You need, you need I, I call deal. it a crowbar. You need a crowbar to get unstuck, right? This, or a lift out of this trench. Yeah. And Kevin, it's even worse than you think. But on the flip side, a good habit, we could say it's, it's even better than you think that once you get out of that rut and do a new one, it, it's even better. Than, it's the willpower guy. He's like, man, once you do this, you don't even have to spend any willpower to not eat that. Like how much willpower do you spend to not go to McDonald's? Zero, uh, right? It's not, and, and, and it doesn't take me any will, willpower to go exercise because that's just, I got a rut there now. How much willpower would it take for you to not have chocolate chips in the afternoon? A lot. A lot. <laughs> okay. So, but if you said, I want to not do that, the first thing we would do is what? We get rid of them. Roll them out. <laughs> we would throw yeah, them in the trash. Say, okay, everybody, don't buy these things. Yeah. Okay. Your, that concept is going on right now in your liver, in your glucose, in your insulin, in these, these ruts or pathways of, and the insulin glucose is a good one because it's also brain connected, is how your body is functioning. So most people, when we talk about fasting, they're like, oh, I can't. I, I, I hit, 
hour 12 or 24 or whatever, and I get famished, I get hungry, I get a headache, I get this. Uh, that's just, that's the slippery slope pulling you back into the rut. But let me, let me ask on fasting, which nobody wants to hear about, but uh, I'm looking at that as, as generally a helpful thing. How many people, if you took a cross, and I know that if you take a cross session of the average person, average, you know, populace, whatever, walking in New York City and mm -hmm. 50 people, how many of them have a literal, we're going to say a deficiency because you would say everybody, we, we should all be able to fast. Like right now, boom, no solid food for three days, just, you know, water. We should all be able to do that. How many people factually can't because they are broken, there are mm -hmm. deficiencies and they really do hit some physiological, not, not psychological, because psychological, we're all going to have problems with, but just physiological. Sure. So deficiency. In well, if by that. can't, you mean, are they going to die? They're, they're not going to die, but they will get a headache. It's a true headache. It's a true, um, a true, like a withdrawal. Their heart rate goes, yeah, withdrawal. Right. There, there's a physiologic thing because if, and, and here, so think about this. This is a good analogy for our brains as well. So we grew up in the seventies and eighties and it was taught low fat, high carb, Snack wells almost became like, you know, cookies became a health food because there's no fat. Right. And so 20, 30, 40 years of that. So then, and people got taught, you know, six small meals a day fat or uh, fuel your body. You don't want your body to consume your muscles. So if you, especially if you're working out, you carb load, all that. And what it, it created these trenches. So those 50 people walking in down New York city, they have never gone three, four hours without mm -hmm. Of, of feeding. So you're always in a fed state or a semi fed state. They never get into a fasting state. Well, they they can't hit those other things. And so it's, it's just like, it's the cast. Remember the cast on your arm and what happened? Have you ever had a cast? Yeah. So what happened when you moved your arm in the first five minutes after you took the cast off? It hurt. Oh, yeah. The oh, joint is stiff yeah. and it hurt. Uh -huh. Well, then if you're a smart person, you would say, Ooh, Put the cast on, I am getting signals that this is not good for my body. Mm -hmm. that, that's the trench. You've trenched in, this joint does not move. Yeah. And it'll lock up. Frozen shoulder is the most common. So people, their shoulder hurts, so they hold their arm like this. And so the more they hold their arm like that, well, it'll, it'll freeze in there. And they have to actually go to surgery under anesthesia. And you actually break the shoulder. They have to unstick it. It's literally a crowbar kind of thing. Well, imagine that going on in your brain. And so people, it's not so much that you need a 10,000, more 10,000 square foot. You just need to grease up the dark corners. If you want to, we can look at language. So talk about imprinting, right? So language is imprinted on you early, early, early. Yeah. But if you're two or three or four and you get adopted into a Chinese family or whatever, you're most likely going to have no accent. You'll never remember English or whatever. Uh, but if you're about, you know, seven or eight, a foreign language becomes significantly harder, but way easier than if you're 18 and older. Because from about six to 18, now your body, your brain starts to spend energy to prune. Okay. A lot of that happens during adolescence. So, and then if they're drinking drugs and, you know, doing stuff that, that hampers that. So this is why we say in Colorado, you know, and, you know, legal marijuana or whatever, but no, it's bad for kids because it hampers this process of neuroplasticity and pruning because the 15 year old is the brain is going to, it's language center is not going to be developed anymore. Basically. I mean, whatever language you have, you can learn some more vocabulary words, yeah. but, but so, and I, you know, I went to, to learn the German thing and I wanted to become fluent. It's uh -huh. much harder when you're 20. Your, your pruning thing, that's interesting because I've spent my lifetime enhancing uh, the language side of my brain and I pruned a when long was the time last ago. Time you did calculus. Exactly. <laughs> math. I, 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 I never liked it. I never, so I spent my life pruning it to where now I, I mean, I, right, I, so I can do the basics of, and that's it. Sure. But a part of your 10,000 square foot thing is you did learn algebra. It's in there. But for you to access algebra is essentially a relearning. Yeah. Now you're going to get there and you're like, oh, solve for X. I remember that. And you, you'll have some of those memories, but it's not, it's, it's like a frozen shoulder. <laughs> and even, yeah, even more, uh, the times tables that you learned in second grade or something like that. I find myself, well, pull out the calculator. I ask the kids, guys, what's nine times eight. I, I don't remember anymore. 
72? 72. <laughs> <laughs> they came back. <laughs> well, you know, so again, when we look at this, so we're looking at ability, creative thinking, critical thinking, there are other things that come to mind for me, but just uh, ability. Again, I like that. I like the thought of, of, of insight and intuition. Okay. Okay. And those are the things that I want in my life as I look at not even prob well, problems. I mean, problem that's solving, sure. problem solving, which, yeah, if, if folks, if you haven't heard me talk about before, uh, this was a Tom Ziegler thing. There was a study he cited where people were asked about goals versus problem solving. And about 80% of the populace is more prone to, uh, ch to, to think of problems more than goals. Fine. Either way, here's an objective. See it as a goal, something I want or a problem to solve. I, I'm more problem solving oriented for the most part. Uh, and yeah, I want those skills. So we got that. So I want better ability. Now we've also then got behavioral issues and I'll throw these out, you know, behavioral issues that we want to, we would like to see better. Let's, let's take ADHD as oh, okay. I'll come back there. And then we've got uh, MCI, mild cognitive impairment, which is feels like it's at an all time high. I mean, I've never, you know, when I was a kid, you didn't hear about it. Every once in a while, somebody's grandparent was a little dingy or something. And now it's just, it's getting Expected. to be normal and it's yeah. younger. Yeah. And then uh, I'll throw in their TBI traumatic brain injury, which that's not something that the majority of people experience, but it's just an amazing field that you know, well, and I've been privy to the past five or six years where man, here's people who have literal brain damage from an accident, whatever and the growth that they can actually experience, which in years, decades past, you thought, I mean, if you get brain damage, that's just where you are. You're going to yeah, be there for yeah. the rest of your life. And now we're saying, no, that's not true. So back to that brain growth. So when we look at that, well, now, before we even started the show, and I shushed us to do it here on the show, I, I was looking at how do we do that brain growth? And I was thinking about, obviously, you know, my wife and people that we know are involved in cognitive training and going through these exercises you mentioned sudoku or you know whatever uh, -huh. uh to grow your brain are there things that we do to grow our brains different than just bringing in more knowledge or is it kind of a, a tension between those because because I, I mean i can I, you know, we can bring in knowledge we got those games what is it jeopardy or whatever where it's just meaningless information Tri trivia pursuits or, yeah, yeah whatever uh -huh. and i think what's the is that person actually smarter or are they just good at retaining stuff is that growing their brain as opposed no. to somebody out here who's you know yeah i i think i'm i'm catching where you're going with uh so if we, we if we back up again in traumatic brain injury and in mild cognitive impairment which is just you know early dementia let's say or people getting older and i would ask him is your memory like it was and most people say no no and, and there's one of the and we expect it not we, to be yeah i'm we, now kind of, 50, well i'm older i'm 50 I'm, i can't yeah. do that exercise i can't think as well and 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 then if they say gosh i'd really want to use my brain what what do i do do i do sudoku or trivial pursuit or how do i do it? and so hands down all of all of these things and part of what your wife does with learning rx and the coaching and and that's a way to do it and then there's another field of neurofeedback and these guys are using electrical signals to stimulate the brain just like you know for physical therapy on a on a muscle like if we, we can attach an electrode in that muscle and make it contract yeah now but that's different than you doing a tricep yeah, thing. can you actually grow it that way i mean it's, well, it's contracting more but it really than stressing? atrophy yes okay all right so so for a paraplegic or somebody yeah. in a coma or yeah something. now you because all of us are walking around with really well compared to an atrophic paraplegic whatever person our our tricep is pretty good um i can't you know do a hundred push-ups or whatever but so the, the a tens unit or something like that is going to feel weird and and not not kind of right and that's where I think most of us, if our brains are kind of not traumatized, then doing neurofeedback or something like that is, it's not really, it's, it's like you don't, that medicine isn't the right one. So let's just say outside of the field of where somebody already has a diagnosis, ADD, ADHD, you know, traumatic brain injury, MCI, those kind of things. So let's say you and me, but we want our brains to be normal or better. Or I don't uh, want it to, I don't want to, to little by little south. go, gosh, I just don't remember like I used to. I don't want to do that. Right. Okay. So what do you do? Yeah. And, and, and this is where I think it's very encouraging for people and very frustrating because you said it's like, it's attention. No, it doesn't mean to go and uh, learn a, to Sudoku. 
it, it doesn't, or trivial, trivial kind of things, unless you want to solve that problem of winning trivial pursuit. Here's hands if down. Yeah. Number one, you know what, you know what it is that grows the brain no. novelty. I was getting, so I just wrote down learning, not just bringing in new learning knowledge, but something actually new. new. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So like you, but, but hold on. So let's not learn. Let's, I want to define that because right. it sounds like learning something. Man, if I go listen to a podcast and it tells me about underwater basket weaving in Indonesia. That you don't care about. That I, that, that's the thing. Is did you know, I learn don't... something? So I could come home you and say, just... hey folks, look what I, I'd say. What, listen to what I learned today. I don't think but it's the same. It's as... not the same. You didn't care. So it's learning something new that you care about. Okay. Or, or, or that I apply. I mean, again, what's the difference between it's just something I was exposed to and gosh, now I know something I didn't know as opposed to I learned to do some, I have a, an ability, the, like an increased yeah, ability. An increased ability. So not if you knowledge. and I right now go and we do a brand new mountain bike trail, yeah. a blue, yeah. a moderate, and, and we do it. And then we're telling our families about it and I enjoyed it or whatever else. You are much more likely going to be able to say, do you remember that one? I think it was the third or fourth curve. It was about 20 degrees and we yeah. were going about this fast. I'm going to say, I have no idea what you're talking about. But if you said, remember the one where we saw the bear? Yes. Yeah. Because your brain is going to be so much more. Now, if we went golfing, I'm going to say, do you remember hole number 12? Where it, you know, it dog legged a little bit this way and that you're going to be like, uh, the one with grass on it, I, you know, or if I said, remember where the eagle flew over? Yeah. So, cause my brain, but I can learn much more detail about a golf course quickly or German quickly than you would be able to do. You would be able to do a mountain biking kind of thing or whatever. So people were already greased up. Our trenches are already made down that pathway. We can go back again to even in you know, Jesus talking to all of us. It's not, Hey, wake up tomorrow and just grit your teeth and be more kind. And we, how many times do we say that to our kids? Yeah. Why can't you just be kind? Well, so for the next 18 years, be being kind, learn, renew your, your brain, mind, daily. Re renew your mind daily. Yeah. Now, if, if your thing is mathematics and that's where those people go into the literal language of mathematics or theology or, or whatever else. And so it's not that, I think language here again, if, so for, for people who are going old and dementia, what do we tell them to do? We don't tell them to watch a new show. We right. don't tell them Sudoku and crossword puzzles. We say, yeah, that's way down low on the list. What's really big? Travel to someplace new. Now, if somebody hates travel, we've talked about that before, that's not your thing. I love that. And I'm gonna remember everything about that trip. And you're gonna remember, oh yeah, we lost our suitcase or whatever. And so travel into someplace new, learn a new language that you really want to learn. Yeah. Uh, reading that's, that's is That's interesting. Good. The, the, uh, what's Duolingo, man, that, yeah. I, I don't even know. My kids have done it. I, I'm not, but I love it. They've it's gamified cool. yeah. it or something, yeah. I guess. Yeah. And, and people are learning that. So learning something new. So let's say you, I'm going to take a, so you as a doc, let's just take doctors. You okay. can be a doctor and a medical doctor in a traditional practice. My point's not to diss that, which we do that plenty. Uh, but, Day in and day out, you do the same thing. You do the same they're thing. Applying day in, day in. Yeah, they're applying knowledge, but they're doing it the same. You can spend 20 years not learning anything much more than what you came out. I mean, you know, it's experientially, but over time, and you're doing the same thing. As opposed to you, and I witnessed this with you, you are consistently getting the next book on neuroplasticity, the next thing that they've learned in this area and this area, and you're increasing it. You care, you're learning it, you're then applying it to the next person. Gosh, it makes me, uh, recently, Tom Ziegler was talking about Zig Ziglar, that his focus was he spent three hours a day reading books, not, you know, nonfiction, self-help stuff, reading it so that he could impart it to his audience. Uh -huh. Man, that is learning and applying, and that is brain training. So one of the clear socioeconomic uh, demographic realities about who is the least likely to get dementia, and it's uh, post-grad professionals that have done postgraduate work is the least likely. Huh. And that's, that's, I don't know what degree he had, but you know, Ziegler, you know, reading three hours a day. So 
Now you, you kind of described a doctor that I would say is the one who's like, you know, barely hanging on to 55 and I just want to retire. I'm tired of the rat race. I don't want to learn anything new. And there's a whole other set of doctors out there that are like, Oh my gosh, I love this stuff. The next new journal article or whatever in their subset of neurology or this, that, the other, there's always something new. Well, you are required for, and there you have to do CME. The, yeah. 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 So, so they, the, the, the state boards, they require that stuff because you don't want, they don't want to, they want to create, create the environment that leads to doctors that are learning now, but the system, you know, keeps us into this old way of, and that's, that's a different subject. Uh, but if you look at socioeconomic, who are the people least likely? It's ones who use their brains a lot to learn their trade, and then they apply it a lot when they're 40, 50, 60, 70. Hmm. If, if, okay, so let's go into the other thing. So novelty, but also if you are trying to learn a new language or, or read a new book or get a new skill or something like that, but you don't exercise, you're not going to be nearly as successful. Why? Because exercise, it, we, and we know this, exercise, and it does a lot of things in the brain, but a famous one is it creates more BDNF. So brain-derived neurotropic factor. Neurotropic means brain growth. Mm -hmm. So the, the whole topic of today is neuroplasticity, brain growth, will brain-derived neurotropic factor, BDNF. How do you stimulate BDNF? And we're right back to all of our shows. Number one, Exercise, code number one, sleep. Sleep, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, even the foods, we're, we're in a, gratefully, I think, in a new fad, a good one, I hope sticks, of foods, fatty foods that feed your brain, like avocados and whatever. And, not, and less carbs. And, so, less, and yeah. less carbs, less sugar. Yeah, which, yeah, okay, let's, let's hit that. Wait, I, actually, before we, I, I want to ask, um, get into some behavioral issues, but before we do that, I, I'm, something you said a second ago made me think of hobbies. I'm interested in how many people that I have on show. So these are people who are successful to some degree. They're, they're influencing, they have a message, they have audiences, they have people listening to them. They generally have, I want to call them hobbies, outlets somewhere where they're doing that. And I thought, gosh, that's an area where you learn. So one of my yeah. primary hobbies is uh, carpentry, I guess is what you'd say. You know, I just built a big tree house for my kids. And I so enjoy, it's such yeah. a different, it's problem solving. How do I get, ex yeah. oh my, and mine's a hundred percent because I'm looking at a tree. There's no plan. It's hmm, how do I do that? I mean, I, you know, look up online and how do you, so how do you build a support? And I, I saw that and then I start making up and it's such a fun, I love sitting back and look and I'll think about it. I'll, I'll wake up in the morning and be thinking about it and think about, and I'll have a new thought. And I've, I've been doing that lately. Uh, even with Scrabble, I play Scrabble online mm -hmm. with Caleb and, you know, I'll see a bunch of words. I'll go, man, I know there's a seven letter word in there and I just can't get it. And I'll leave it and I'll come back four hours from then and look at it again. And sometimes I'll go again and then boop, there it is. And it's just to see my brain work and to do that on problems. But coming back to hobbies, I wonder if that's some of the reason that people are drawn to that because it's generally an area. Maybe your work is fairly static. That is the case for a lot of people. I mean, yeah. you could always learn and grow in that. But let's say it is, but you have a hobby over here. It's gardening, it's dancing, it's motor, whatever it is, and you're learning new things, doing new things, growing in that growth, just yeah. again, growing in your ability, knowledge you're, and ability. You're, it's, it's the same with muscles. You grow your muscles by using them. You grow your bones yeah. by using them. And think of the negative side of that. One of the great creators of mild cognitive impairment and dementia is, especially in men, they retire. And they, and they don't retire to a, an endeavor. They retire to ease. They don't and we, have and the decline is always me. Like, why do people want to retire? If we look at the stats, it's That's terrible. Right. It's terrible. You, re, you retire, you now have no purpose. You're learning nothing. You just go and golf or, or whatever. And the decline is just rapid. New, new patient yesterday, well-to-do guy, COVID slumped his business. And, and he said, I went to work every day and did nothing. I kept, you know, because the uh, construction stuff, they couldn't go. They got it all ready. They've, they've solved the problem and now they need to go. And it just... It just didn't go. And he said, it just hurt. Hmm. And it impacted the rest of his life. Um, the, the, uh, the, well, go ahead well, back to your, well, so, so we've been, you know, I feel like we've done a good job of covering just basic ability, things that we want to do to learn, you know, if, if let's say there's not a problem now, if we transition into problems and I just kind of laid them out from, you know, acute, let's say some behavioral problems, MCI, mild cognitive impairment, uh, a traumatic brain injury. Um, you know, behavioral issues. I mean, you see 
the first thought, maybe it's not fair, right? Well, I guess it's because, you know, my wife, and of course, people we know work with uh, uh, Learning RX, and they deal a lot with kids who have things like AD, HD, and I don't know what other behavioral, you know, stuff that you got kids on Ritalin and whatever. I mean, what are all the, yeah, I don't, I don't we talked about that a little bit. I don't think of that as behavioral issues. But, kid, but like, parents are, are, are dealing with the kid in school and behavioral problems, these outbursts, lack of attention, hyperactivity, uh, whatever. I mean, behavioral issues. It, and uh, Right. They're an outgrowth of an underlying cause. And that underlying cause could be parenting, you know, the, well, the, the trauma I, of parenting I, or too much like food. Yeah, Jadaria and goldfish and chocolate milk. And Oh, I'm looking at uh, my uh, one in Dakota. Uh, he's my 10-year-old. And that dude is just – fairly high strung and, and yeah. on the trip that we just had we did have we had later nights we had more did you see carbs. behavior in him yeah he was just motor mouth and i thought man i can see it how oh, he could get labeled yeah. hyperactive well, and okay. put on a drug if we kept down that road of that's well, right again, we had more sugar more carbs less sleep mm -hmm. more sometimes stimulation more, yeah and, more stimulation mm -hmm. oh my gosh new we stuff get home and and he just regulates back to uh i mean he's, uh -huh. he's a more talkative outgoing kid but man well, i could see that and those are just yes environmental that, things that i think so if and that's where i uh, my heart reaches out to our hearers is to say you, you're seeing these behavioral things in your kids and sometimes we blame ourselves or, or gosh what's wrong with my kid and, and of course you go to your doctor and this is where it's the frustration of you get a medicine so you won't remember this but when my oldest who's 14 was four, so we're 10 years later, in, in a space of about four weeks, kind of like Nakoda. No, I remember. We yeah. saw clear ADHD, like severe, it developed. He, he got sick, and then he recovered, and then he got a virus. And then um, just in, in a short amount of time, we saw a behavioral change. He also kind of had a little, what I thought was a tick, he kept touching his face. And he would have to just, he just itched his, he would became tomato head. Like if you see people who they exercise and they just get red, um, clearly within four to five weeks. And this was at the beginning of my functional medicine learning and all of that. And, and like you were just saying, if I had been a normal parent or whatever, like, my gosh, I've got to get to my kid to the doctor. What's going on? He can't sit still for school or at the dinner table. If I did, if I clamped down and said, be still, don't touch your face or anything, he would obtun. He would just almost fall asleep sitting there. Long story short, you know, uh, come to find out that, you know, why did it happen? We don't really know, but there's dramatic food sensitivities and we had to do a lot of work. He had some insufficiencies there. And four months later, there's no sign of ADD yeah. or ADHD. And 10 years later there, you know, he's a fine student and all of that. But what would the pathway have been? Down that brain related behavioral consequential thing that now 30, 40% of all of our students are suffering with some kind of diagnosis, whether it's inflammation of the body like asthma or inflammation of the brain or behavioral issues. And is it related to the fact that kids don't sleep enough these days? Yes. They stimulate with these screens too much. Yes. The sugar, the caffeine. Yes, 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 yes. All of these things. So it, in the brain of all that, remember how we said we take for granted our balance right here your brain is the most complicated sensitive instrument in the universe that we know about. We, it, it, we take it for granted and then we think we can survive on six hours of sleep. Um, we, that we can have, that we can have disdain for our job and not think that that does something to the pruning of our brain day yeah. in and day out, yeah. or even worse, disdain for a spouse or being in a toxic relationship. And imagine what that does to your brain. You're not growing. You're, stunting all of those things and if you don't exercise bdnf is fertilizer just a day in and day out that little extra fertilizer of of growth and there is no magic pill for this you can't learn a language like john travolta did in five minutes it won't happen that way so what do you do you have to make a decision and choose you set up your pathways day in and day out and that that is never going to win a political election Nobody ever wins on, hey, personal responsibility and slow growth. <laughs> that book won't sell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, God, oh, gosh. You know, you know, you saying that, I almost feel 
a responsibility to say, you know, when people, we talk about exercise and I talk about that, man, it takes no willpower for me to exercise. I got that right down that that can sound, if that sounds uh, elitist or arrogant or whatever, I am aware that I, I think I, I hold on to that stuff for dear life. I hold on to my healthy food, getting sleep, exercise, because when it comes down to it, there's an under current for me of the overwhelmedness of life. And I think oh. I, I'm without those things, I would be the deep end in the of, deep end yeah. of depression and despair. I get, man, I get that. And I, I think I gravitate towards those things as a lifeline because without them, that's, that's, I, that's goosebumpy <sighs> right there. Uh, it, to, 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 not to make light of it. So we were doing a church meeting the other day and about the youth and, and sort of the icebreaker question was, what, what's your favorite food? And kind of in a joking way, but also in all seriousness, I, I said, you know, I'm just on Brussels sprouts. I'm so <laughs> You're the most unpopular guy grateful. ever in the youth group. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a youth group, Brussels sprout party. Uh, that was one of our ideas, though. Side of the price of cheesecake. <laughs> We're going to do a youth group where uh, the Brussels sprouts are covered in chocolate and you tell the kids it's chocolate balls. It's sweet. <laughs> you see how many they can eat. <laughs> Maybe if you had a good salty one, it might be, it might be okay. Uh, dark, yeah, chocolate. Yeah. dark chocolate and Brussels sprouts. But no, like you said, I, but I, I don't take that for granted. I am not any, I remember the days I didn't like the vegetables and I'm, I'm wrestling with my kids just, you know, choose to like it, you know, and now, and they don't, I hope for the future for them to actually get to the point where they can decide that. But like you're saying, I, these are, and our friend Dustin, he said, you know, these habits of my connection to God, my connection to sleep, they're lifelines because he was in the storm yeah. and the deep end was so close. Well, kind of like that reminds me of the, you know, the, the fear of God. We hear that. And if you're from the, you know, grew up in the church, that probably has all kinds of negative baggage. I understand that from an awe. I, I yeah, the fear respect of I, I fear the lack of God. I fear the uh, lack of yeah. light in my life that I will be overcome by you know darkness. I have the same similar fear of disability. The, the, the lack of exercise. Yeah. Equals well, e yeah, inability. Where, where is that gonna if I stop now, where is it gonna lead to, man? A year from well, now, I'll be that less able. Like you say, it leads to glass of sweet tea and a rocking chair on the front porch and your grandpa on yeah. the couch. Yeah. And like we just spent like, you know, 10 days and we imbibed on everything, um, everything you imbibe on we did. And, and, and my wife at some point, she says, man, I'm looking forward to this being over. Cause I've got to stop and all the Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I've got to get and, But to go down that road too long, too far is a, a fearful thing. So, you know, so maybe some of the behavioral I don't is is outside a little bit of this brain growth, but I do want to talk about. I mean, traumatic brain injury. We can go into okay. that. That's so few people, but MCI. Well, mild hey, hang on, it's right. it's not because everybody out there has had a head bonk. Yeah. Okay. Now TBI is basically a grayscale. So traumatic brain injury, and if you think super severe over now, it's all the military guys, and you know, loss of consciousness or a coma for five minutes or something like that. Okay, that's the black. Well, we recently had recently since uh, if if anybody has seen the movie Concussion with Will Smith, and okay, it's yeah, the, yeah. Uh, depiction the, of Doctor Amayu Amayu, uh, I can't remember, but it's on the NFL players, and right, so these guys constant little right, whether they got knocked bit. out or not. If you quote unquote got your bell rung, I saw stars, I, I could remember for a few minutes. Uh, yeah, like, one of our friends just literally last week was skating, fell backwards. Uh -huh. And he's, they said, I wasn't knocked out, but I have no memory. Well, that's a concussion. That's a, yeah. and, and so we say, look, you, if I cut your skin, even if you heal it perfectly, there will be a scar. Yeah. So imagine that on your brain and that scar on your brain basically means when you go to retrieve that data, there's a speed bump. There's how a, big, so think about it. How many people have had, and you said not very many people. I'm like, no, everybody. I guess so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So everybody has had a grayscale, like you know, all of our kids bonk their head and they cry, whatever else. And actually kids are set up great for falling. They got heavy heads and they're close to the ground and they're squishy. So they really do bounce way more than we would. And then for us, it's the bike rack, it's the whatever else, it's those kinds of things. Which let me just, just, just for an analogy, the thing in there is, you know, like to take a woodpecker, which are constant at my home right now. They are built with a head to withstand boom, 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 boom uh, an impact. So are, the uh, rams you know the right. sheep that yep. clash or whatever we are not 
Correct. Our brain is not made for that collision, which now I cringe to see football. Nothing against football. I dig it too, but oh my gosh, to see that, the hell, and I played football and that was a, you crack helmets, boys. Yeah, I mean, that, that was, was part of the thing. And now I'm going, oh, don't do, do you, that. Do you know that soccer's as uh, high on the list? I, yes, with the, uh, the, the ball. The, the, yeah. the ball and, and when two people are going for a header and they hit heads. Oh, yeah. and, and so, you know, we don't allow our, you have to be 10 or 12 and under, I think, to, in order to head the ball. Oh. Um, but even then, a well- kicked ball and you're you're doing that and they always hit the top of their head they never hit it in the right spot and that that is a little bit of brain trauma so that's over here on the left side that's not super severe but how many of those in a unique individual one kid can do 10 and he's fine another kid he does number 11 and it did something and is that going to impact his behavior yes so i i do the sometimes the pre-participation high school football store and i'm doing this kid and he's like yeah i play football and and the mom said, yeah, he got his bell rung last year, and we're, we're not really worried. We're, you know, we're kind of worried a little bit, and his dad was one of the coaches. And his mom said these words. Yeah, he, he didn't smile the rest of the year. Goodness. And I'm, I raised my eyebrow, and I'm like, uh, what do you mean? Like, kind of joking. And she's like, uh, no. It, well, that's a behavior change, like you're talking about. So, but people love football, the religion of football, the idol. So they literally sacrifice the health of your kid to this. Well, since this that, idol. I don't know if I can attribute it to that movie, but the big brouhaha, they did change the helmets and I don't yep. know if they did anything more than that. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I think that for sure the participation stuff and the high school sports, if you get knocked out or whatever, they pull you out a lot better now. So there's lots of change for sure. And even Marcy, running the coach she has to make the coaches go through you have to do the training so that when your kid gets hit and they say weird things you pull them out you don't say oh you're fine and go back in there and yeah. be tough and all that so it, it is better but we're back to people who in their 40s or 50s and they st if you had so i told the guy the other day i said uh from now on and forevermore you are more likely to get dementia there it is are you more likely yes well what do i do now we're back to your question. How do I, now that I know I'm going to have this scar in my warehouse, that's going to, as I try to go get that information, but it tips me over this way, it's going to take more time to get that information or whatever else. Can and we not combine MCI in it? I mean, it, in there, we're talking about a lack, whatever. Here's a brain. It should look this way. Now, now, yes. So that's, we go back to the brain as a unique individual, whether it's physical trauma or insufficiency of magnesium. And that is a insufficiency trauma over time yeah it's 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 just variations of the same kind of brain trauma and is it fair to say like you and i talk about so often you know if i want to be the 90 year old guy yeah. who can do 10 pull-ups i need to be doing 10 pull-ups every day yeah or you know ongoing is it fair to say if i treat my because then that 90 year old guy has the you know biceps or the shoulder you know back and, muscles and whatever motion to do to that, do yeah. that yeah if I want to be that nine-year-old guy who has a brain with the ability that I have today, possibly even more, again, we've gotten to, to, to the norm is, well, of course you can at 90. Really? I mean, is it not possible? It, I would say, of course you can. You can, but it's going to take. <laughs> but between now and then, you, if you, so I told the guy, because Mike, uh, he's not really a good exerciser or a good I'm like, if you, you are a thinker, you are a professional, you, you help clients. If you want to be doing that, if you want to choose to be able to do that, if you want to, when you're 75, 85, 95, then from now on and forevermore, your lack of exercise, the lack of BDNF is now more traumatic for you because of that brain injury. Okay. All right. The requirement of BDNF to be becoming the kind of guy who can do this tomorrow and at 85 yeah. the requirement is now higher for bdnf and adequate sleep and in his case you know quit fiddling around with the gluten we know it's that you you already said you feel better without it so stop choose but his rut is so hard on this side it's so hard for people all of us not just him to get out of that rut to say well i'm kind of fine you know i'm steady. people tell me all the fine all the time you know i do pretty well I do pretty well. I'm like, okay, if you're satisfied with where you are. And great. Now we're back to my list that <laughs> yeah. I love of what symptoms are you okay with and what performance level, which we just never think about. We don't, and we're back to your question, which we did a show on. 
uh, I don't have the episode in front of me, but is your goal next year to slide into a nursing home right. or be the Olympics? Probably neither. But neither. when do we ever, you, your trajectory has to be a, tipped a little up or you're going down. Yeah. There's, there's no maintenance. But I'll put that out to everybody listening right now. Again, where do you want your mental ability? Are you where you want to be now? Do you have all the stuff we're talking about, critical thinking skills and intuition and insight and hope and joy and whatever? These are, these are brain, these, these things well, come out of you. Kindness. Kindness. And the Patience ability, yeah. The, the, well, I, I like what you said. The ability to manifest that, because when I am lacking sleep, or I've OD'd on sugar, or you know, are you I've a been, little more irritable? Oh my gosh, yeah. My <laughs> ability to extract kindness when somebody's driving slow in the left lane is, is almost impossible. Anyways, I need to be at my very best to harness kindness for that person. That's right, yeah. and to. You need to harness it to drive the way your wife wants you to drive when she's in the car. Yep. To do those kind of Which is a kindness. To which say, is a okay, kindness I, to her. I am driving. And you're going to get there slowly. Slower. <laughs> you're going to waste five minutes. Exactly. Exactly. So, exactly. so let, me, let me ask this, because this is, this, is this is one of those things that's out there. Of What do you say to the patient who's t- you're talking about? MCI, mild cognitive impairment. Let's say they're 50 years old or whatever, and they're looking at And they say, well... My, my mom had it, my dad had it, or my mom had it and her mom had it yep. around age, whatever. Yep. I mean, how much hereditary? So we, uh, in this case, a lot. Really? Yeah. If oh, there that's not is, the answer I was looking for. No, I know. That's why I'm going to highlight because normally we say your genetics matters less, you know. Uh, but in this case where if you've got a first degree family relative with Alzheimer's and especially young Alzheimer's, that's a biggie. Really? That's a biggie. Why? And, uh, well, Why outside? Because of- it is more genetically entrained. Really? Well, no, so I just said, I said, well, son of a gun, if your parents are white Caucasians, then you're likely going to be a white Caucasian. I mean, that, that, that's just the way the genetics well, work. Well, but that's outside of environment of saying, you know, if I, if I. But here's the thing. So this is related to, let's, let's go a step deeper and say it's APO. So, um, This is the one genetic test. So if people want to know about a resource to know how at risk your brains are from a dementia standpoint, especially if you have a family history, you do want to get the genetic test for APOE. And this is where your wife can talk to you all about it. Uh, So APO, if you have that genetic marker, you are at more risk. And especially the most famous one is an APO44. So if both parents gave you this four, yeah. And so that's a description of the actual allele that got together with the other parent. If you have that, no different than if we say, hey, both parents came together and this person was born and they're very, very fair skinned, we'd look at them and it wouldn't be a stretch of the imagination to say, wow, you're at risk for sunburn and skin cancer. Mm-hmm. That's pretty clear. Okay, same thing here. If you're a 4-4, we just look at you and say, wow, you're at more risk. Now, that doesn't mean you're predestined to have dementia. And actually, some friends of ours, uh, she was kind of miffed and tearful. Like she, when she first got that done and said, oh my gosh, I didn't want to know this. Now I feel like I'm predestined to have this, you know, this early onset dementia. But the phrase is genetics loads the gun. Uh, lifestyle pulls the trigger. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so, I, so the comment to, to Jen was, no, 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 no. And I used... Just because somebody's fair skin, does that mean they have to be sunburned all the time? Well, no, but you can change your lifestyle and wear long sleeves or wear a hat or, do all, or don't take up golf or something like that. So for APO44, you have to be more keenly aware of your diet, your sleep, your exercise, all okay, of these and things. Okay, and that's where I want to go. So I'm, I'm, I love that because I want people to hear that. So uh, you, uh, you said the loaded gun that – what did you say? What was it? Yeah, genetics, genetics loads loads the gun. Okay, so let's just take, take anybody. We all have a gun loaded to some degree for all things. For just all, all things. things. But, yeah. but, but, but here, for this show, for brain deficiency, lack, whatever, okay. we could say that. So let's say you had whatever, however many. So I, I raced bikes, you know, uh, for so much of my life. How many times did I crack my head, break a helmet? I don't know. It's not something stupid, but 10, 15, 20. I don't, I don't even know. Okay. I, I didn't pay attention. So I've got those. So maybe I've got some scars. I don't know. What, I guess I've done labs to know what my AP. Did you oh, do? No, it's 23andMe. Did you do the 23andMe genetics? 
I don't no, remember no, us I talking didn't. about that. So I have no idea. So let's say that I've got something there. There's another. Yeah. So let's just say if you had a three, four or a four, four, and you've got 15 years of one head bonk per year. Yeah. And then whatever other lifestyle I've had. So I, my gun is low. So here we are today with guns loaded to some degree. So we have a propensity or a harder right. thing. And my thought, I don't know why I went to this, but my thought was if I have two dogs, one with four legs, one with three legs, I'm going to walk both of them. That one with three legs is working harder. Well, tough. He's still going to, I'm not going to say don't walk. He's got three legs. He can make it. And so right. it's a harder effort. So to whatever level back to whatever, how much your gun is it's, loaded. Yeah. You may have to work harder not to pull that trigger. So yeah. if you've got the, the skin, you know, it doesn't mean that the person can never go to the beach. It means you better plan ahead and have SPF 50. Well, and, we just did it. That. We spent a week outside at the you know, lake almost every day. And I've got, well, gosh, my little one, who's you know, not a <laughs> biological kid. She's dark skinned. Uh, zero sunscreen on zero. her. And, and, and then my other one. So I've got what I got seven biological Caucasian kids. Well, Ian's I have, over here. Oh, slattered. exactly. The dude is, I think he's from Ireland. I mean, he is, he is so <laughs> pale skin. Is, so. <laughs> yeah, he it is. It is. He's so pale skin. I mean, it's starkly different than the rest of them. We actually have a picture of him holding our little girl oh and the God, contrast. <laughs> yeah, I'll show it to you. It's, it's amazing. But so it was. So he's the one with uh, as much as we could a hat on extra sunscreen, less time out there. And so he Our just- Our family's the same, right? So Sagan's very fair and he's the oh, yeah. one that, you know, no also hair doesn't now. have any hair. So we constantly are asking about a hat and yep. sunscreen and all of that. We were just in Wichita at the pool yep. and uh, same kind of thing. He has to be on the clock scheduled. Hey, get out, dry off, you know, yeah. reapply and all that. Reapply, let it dry way. before you- yeah. all this. Oh my gosh, yeah. Okay, was... but th there's the thing. The lifestyle, so genetically you can't change that but you change the lifestyle. So imagine the, the trigger finger. So lifestyle pulls the trigger. Yeah. Well, imagine if, you know, genetically you have a itchy trigger, a hair, what do you call it? Hair. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember either. The, the trigger is really easy to pull or imagine some old sticky gun that you have to squeeze really hard. So your daughter, your youngest, Jadaria, you, you have to put her in the sun 20 hours a day. She's, she's just not going to burn. Yeah. So her that is stuck that bullet is never going to fire that she gets a sunburn and the same is true for like especially indian people indian indian like that uh i mean they can still burn like uh african-american black people they can they can burn quite they can burn but it's, it's just less way, propensity it's just less propensity yeah, yeah. no different take take ian and, and jade Ari, and he can have sugar doesn't bother him as much and do it to her and she's and, and she's gonna yeah, yeah so yeah, propensity yeah, yeah. so that lo I, I love that so this when we're talking about this Brain training. All of this is going into the brain. Yeah. Yeah. So some people have a genetic propensity to be math or language or whatever else, and they, they learn better. They gravitate towards those things. That's not, and, and you mentioned behavior. And I would say, if this is where it gets so complex, but you know, we, we quote that scripture, train up a child in the way they should go. So we can't insist that our kids learn calculus because I love calculus. Mm -hmm. Some of them are gifted over here with creative and some of them are gifted over here. And we can't insist that they learn at a desk all the time. And some need to learn by doing some need to learn by hearing some, whatever else. And, and all of those, but that makes the job of teaching and parenting that much harder to do. And our yeah. system doesn't do it very well. And so then the one who needs to learn by doing, not only does he, get not enough sleep, too many screens, too much sugar, and then you're going to stick them at a desk or her. And it just, it, why? That's not a behavioral necessarily thing. Now behavior starts to come into it because as that kid then reaches his own thinking ability, he's choosing these things. But it's like what you said at the beginning, the imprinting, the patterning, the, the pathways through the brain that we create the ruts or the paths the helpful paths or the destructive ruts are there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a challenge. It's, it's a challenge. But it, I, want, I don't want to end on the hard part. I want to end on the encouragement. You can get out of any rut. You can reestablish any new path. You can teach old dogs new tricks. You are not set in your ways. There's no such thing as, oh, I lost all my new brain cells when I drank too much in college. That's a fallacy. You can grow, and no matter how much TBI there's been, that's what we're seeing with the troops coming back. There is healing to be had. And yes, it comes through exercise and sleep and relationships and novelty and learning something new and coaching and training and hope. 
All yeah. of those things are what feeds the brain. Well, and back to you, can't, none of us can be perfect, but we can all be well, well, or well, or and yeah, to that person who had, who's, you know, mom and grandmother and whatever, all started getting dementia at 55. Uh, maybe, maybe you are going to get it, but can you stave it off till 65? Till Absolutely. Can, it, the, you know, you don't know because that's the future, but can you have hope to do that? There's definitely things we can do to help the issue Absolutely. as opposed Without to hurt it. Doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. And we talked about resources. So uh, his name is Norman Deutsch, yeah. D-O-I-D-G-E. Uh, his books, and he's got some TED Talks, uh, The Brain's Way of Healing. And uh, his other book is The Brain That Heals Itself. Uh, they're, they're great reading. Uh, most lay people will enjoy just reading about it. And especially if you're concerned about your own brain, if you have symptoms, if there's been TBI and, and, you know, the brain talking about MS, ALS, depression, anxiety, fatigue, brain fog, yeah. you know, and, and I think we're going to have, um, Dr. Dale Bredesen on the show. Um, and we'll be talking about all his book is, uh, uh, the end of Alzheimer's. Yeah. And now yeah. he's got a program. We'll be talking about that as well. So, all right. Good stuff. It's Let's go grow our brands. Yeah.